Welcome to the the Tourism Channel. Our goal is to showcase the top attractions in the San Francisco Bay Area. Now, today is Tuesday, July 21st, 2020 at 5.30 p.m. Now, today we're going to be featuring part two of a series of adventures in the Anderson Valley wine region of Mendocino County. Now Mendocino County is about two hours north of San Francisco if you're driving to the Inland Valley city of Ukiah but if you're going out to the Mendocino coast it's about three three and a half hours. There's two ways you can get out here. One is crossing over the Golden Gate Bridge going northbound. You just stay on one, Highway 101 until you get to Cloverdale. Then you go westbound on 128 Cloverdale. And as you're going 128, it's, it's a part of Anderson Valley. So you just keep going 128 west and you run right into Anderson Valley where the wine region is. Uh, the other way to get here is if you did uh, going over the Golden Gate Bridge, going northbound, Highway 101, you take the Stinson Beach exit, Highway 1. And then you just go out Highway 1 all the way out the coast and then up the coastline northbound all the way to where the city of the county of Mendocino and then Highway 128 and you just turn east on 128 and then you're right in the heart of Anderson Valley. Now, uh, as far as lodging goes, it's very limited lodging in Anderson Valley. I think there's a few lodges in the area. Your best bet for lodging is going to be up in Ukiah, where I'm staying at. And that's at the Hampton Inn in Ukiah. And there's a few other lodging facilities in Ukiah. And then to get to Anderson Valley, you would just take Highway 2 from Ukiah right into Highway 128. And you're right in the heart of Anderson Valley. Um, now, as far as Anderson Valley goes, what's special is the, as I mentioned earlier, this is a major wine region where the, in Mendocino County where one of the main focuses is the Pinot Noir and Chardonnay because it likes the hot during the day but very cool temperatures at night and the cool temperatures are coming off the coast, uh, Ocean Valley coast. Now, Anderson Valley constitutes of several cities in the valley, which include Navarro, Philo, Boonville, and then a part of Cloverdale. And today we're going to be featuring Philo as well on Highway 128. We're going to be going eastbound. And part one featured from uh, Hirsch Vineyards coming all the way up to eastbound on 128, going up to Greenwood Ridge Vineyards. And in part two today, we're going to continue going eastbound on 128 from Greenwood Ridge Vineyards as we head towards uh, Boonville. And one other thing I forgot to mention about the highway, uh, 253 and even highway, a uh, portion of highway 128, it's very windy and narrowy. So bear that in mind. So if you do drive slow as I do on these windy, narrowy roads, you might want to pull over to the side and one of the turnouts and let faster moving traffic go ahead of you. With that being the case, so uh, let's get started. The temperature today in Philo is 81 degrees Fahrenheit with eight mile, 11 mile an hour winds and 44 degree uh, humidity. Now what's special about Greenwood Riz Vineyards is for starters, they are a winner, a 91 points winner of the Pinot Noir Elk Vineyard. Uh, that's part one. And part two is that I attended a guest of varietal contest that was sponsored by Greenwood Witch Vineyards a number of years ago. I believe it was 2006 and 2007. I attended both years and it was a lot of fun. The objective was to blind taste wine varietals, both white and red, and you'd have to guess which varietal it was. And what they did was they had three levels of contests. 
a beginning, intermediate, and advanced. And I was in the beginning level. And they had four whites, four reds, and they had two levels of competition as well. If you make it past the first rounds of competition, that is. If you made it past the first round, then you go into the second round. And the first year, I didn't make it past the first round, 2006. But the second year, I did. Third in the second round level of the beginning, con beginning, uh, beginning level contest, and it was a lot of fun. And besides the um, guessing of the varietal, they also had a tent area where you, they served lunch, and actually you can buy lunch. And it was a great opportunity to network with the other attendees, share travel ex experiences. And overall, it was a great overall experience. And the reason why I bring this up is that these are the kind of experiences you can have in attending these, these events in wine country. And the best way is to subscribe to their newsletter and then look for their events. And that's how I did. That's how I found out about that guest arrival contest. And that's the kind of contest for people who like to compete. But there's other kinds of events also that the wineries have, like wine dinners, uh, they also have grand tastings where they bring a wide variety of wineries in under a tent, do tastings. You know, some wineries do food and wine pairings. The list goes on and on with entertainment. So, this is why I share that story. It's a great way to enhance your experience in visiting a wine country as a whole. Uh, and also, it's a great romantic getaway for couples. Um, they're not really family oriented since alcohol is being served, but it's also great for singles as well. But anyway, this is what you want to be able to do when you experience wine country besides just going in for wine. Continuing our journey along Highway 128 going eastbound. An amazing view of the vineyards in the valley as well as the hillside uh, tree, mountainous trees. Highway 128. The tasting room of Greenwood Ridge Vineyards. 